is Sarah Siegel. I'm from UW Extension. So first floor, just down the hall here. Um, and Jeremy will introduce himself too, but we just partnered up today to talk about um, checking your credit report and then how that is related to identity theft and some of the things that we're seeing in Wood County. So it's sponsored by Wood County Wellness, the health department in UW Extension. So um, that's why we had you sign in because we'll relay those names to Sammy and that's who her replacement is. Um, if you're here not as a Wood County employee, it's just updated information again about what we're seeing in you know Wood County related to identity theft and also what resources we have for you related to checking your credit report. Uh, some of the things on the table is again just a survey. It helps us out as UW Extension. Um, we're trying to get our wallet wise or financial education programming going in Wood County. So this just helps us gather some data about um, kind of where people are at and gather some county data and then it also leaks into state data. So if you can just fill that, you can leave it right on the table. Um, the handouts for me today is just going to be it's a pamphlet and then it has some back sheets behind it. We're just going to reference some of those as we kind of go through today. We're checking your credit report and then the other stuff um, will kind of be covered by both Jeremy and I. So for extension, we promote checking your credit report three times during the year and we promote the dates of um, 2, 2, 6, 6, and 10, 10. In our heads, we thought that that was easy for people to remember. Um, it kind of sticks. Um, and it also spreads it out enough so you're able to um, have that length of time in between them and we'll talk about why that's um, important. So per federal law, you're entitled to your three free credit reports each year um, from the three different bureaus. So Equifax, Experian, and then TransUnion. So they're available to you, you might as well access them. We recommend that you check your credit report again three different times throughout the year so that um, you're spreading your report out and there's four months difference between each of them. Um, so February 2nd, June 6th, and October 10th, so we're a little past the October 10th day. Um, but spreading them out, and, and Jeremy will kind of talk about this too, it just helps you overall check for identity theft and just be aware of what's happening in your credit history. Um, so if you kind of pull them boom, boom, boom all in one day, then you're out of luck for 364 days because you can't pull them again. Um, so we recommend that you pull them, you know, again with the four months difference in between them just so you can kind of track your credit history and what's taking place. If you've never done it before, it doesn't matter what bureau you start with, just as long as you pull one of them and you start to see the information that's in there. Sometimes people are surprised that, oh yeah, I forgot about that card or I forgot about that. So it tells you um, some information that you might have forgotten about. Your credit report is a detailed record of your credit history for the past seven to 10 years. So some things are going to be on there for a while. Um, people who look at your credit reports would be um, potential creditors, employers, and landlords. But then also, again, it's your history. It's for you to make sure that you know what's been happening. Um, and then leading to identity theft, you kind of you have that background as well. Um, your information on your credit report can affect the, your ability to get a mortgage or pay rent. So as we work with people who are struggling to find housing here in Wood County, their credit reports become pretty important. Just to show that even though maybe it's been negative in the past, that there is positive directions or they're moving in a positive direction. So if you work with any um, low income audiences in your place of employment here with the county or not with the county, those are some things that we try to encourage people just to move it again in that positive direction for their um, credit history. The amount of interest you pay on credit cards and loans, your monthly insurance um, payments, and then some applications for jobs. So again, as we work with people, we're trying to encourage them that lots of people could possibly check your credit report. And same for you, um, but sometimes as we have been in the same profession for a while and we're kind of set, um, some of these people are maybe aren't accessing our credit report anymore. Um, what do you need? And just so you know, in the brochure that we gave you, all these steps are listed. So like who's looking at it, but then also um, what do you need from them? And then the, the addresses to the three bureaus. These pamphlets are available at the library. So for anyone who doesn't have access to the internet at home, or possibly doesn't want to um, send in the mail form or, or call the number. So you need your full legal name, your social security number, um, date of birth, and then an address of current residence for the last two years. Um, what happens uh, if you're doing it online is some 
sometimes the address can be the tricky part, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but for the past two years. So if you've lived in the same place for you know over two years, you're good to go. Uh, it becomes more of a concern for the people who have moved quite frequently um, and are constantly looking for housing. So you can pull your credit report three ways online, um, by phone or by mail or by phone. Um, and we'll, if you're doing the mail form, I have the, the forms right up here for you. Um, the only thing about this is that you're mailing it in. So it's going through the snail mail and you're putting your social security number on it. And you receive no verification from them that they have received it until they send your report to you. Um, so in Wood County here, when we're talking to different audiences, older adults tend to be more comfortable with this method. But again, the social security number is going through the mail. So that is the biggest concern about that one. The web address is up here um, that you can access the form on your own, but we have them in our extension office. And then on your brochure and in some of your other information, it does list the address. So that is the way that you are choosing to pull your credit report. Um, it's all the information is on there. My phone is just an 800 number. You'll be mailed your report within 15 days. The thing about the phone is it's an automated service, and so it does okay with your name, your social security number, and your um, date of birth. It gets a little um, wonky sometimes with the address. So if you are helping someone pull their report and they've moved within the last year, so they're putting more than one address in, it sometimes kicks it back a little bit. So sometimes it doesn't like you um, if you have multiple addresses. So that's just one thing to remember if you're doing it for yourself or if you're helping someone pull that report that that is the one thing about the phone. And also just like any automated service, sometimes it may not like um, you and just say that you're speaking things funny or not pronouncing things and so it may get a little bit um, wonky in that way as well. Um, we encourage online, um, again, we put things out at the library, um, but here as part of your wellness program, um, you can access it and pull it at work as well just because it is part of your wellness points. Well, we're assuming that that's okay. So um, this is just what the screen would look like if you went to Equifax. And again, we're promoting that you go to the annualcreditreport.com, which is listed in here underneath online. We don't promote that you go to Credit Karma or any of those other sites, even though they say they're free. Up front, they could be free, but there's also those little itty bitty check boxes that they check for you that you don't realize, and then you get kind of stuck in some of that other junk mail or junk email that you don't want. Um, so we don't want you to be charged for anything at any time. So annualcreditreport.com is the only 100% free site to pull your credit report. So if you go online and you pull it for Equifax, this is the screen that you're going to see. Um, so it's going to ask you again your address. It's going to ask you, you know, if you're a robot. So it'll ask you to put things into a little box. And then it has you pick your, your bureau that you want to pull it from. So again, the screen before was Equifax. So on the right here, this is the annualcreditreport.com website. That's what it looks like. It's going to ask you some verification questions, usually two, um, that hopefully are unique to you. So if it's something that you're not recognizing, that would be kind of a red flag. Sometimes if there is um, something with your address or um, something, some other information that it's not liking, you will see a screen like this, which means that it has not gone through as far as online. And I wanted to put this up here just because sometimes people see this screen and then panic and think that it actually went through. This screen says that it's, it kicked you out and it didn't like you at the time. Um, so it is not going to send you a report or you're not going to see it. So you're not punished or it's not counting as one of your free um, or your free pull from that um, bureau. For this one, it tends to happen more with Equifax. So then it's going to have you send in your request by mail and then it asks you for some information. Um, you can certainly send it in and try to pull your report this way through. Otherwise, you can start over the process and pick a different bureau, um, and then it will go through. Just remember in your notes when you're recording this that you didn't get through with Equifax or you were kicked out, but you got through with Experian. Just so as you kind of spread out your polls here, you remember what bureau you pulled from at what date. Um, Experian, this is what your... Um, Kind of screenshot would look like so it tells you your order summary and again you can see that it's free 
Um, when you're reviewing your report, you're going to see personal information on there. So um, again, you want to check over that, check all addresses, employment dates, any information to make sure that it's all um, correct. You're going to see a section that's called public records. Um, so none is good, um, but don't panic if there's listings. So there's some public records. So these are some examples of what you may see on here. <coughs> It will also tell you um, what date that it will be removed. Just again, because on your credit history, it's from seven to 10 years. Any negative items, so late payments or collections. Again, this is some examples of what you may see as far as negative items. Again, we always tell people that if your credit history is negative, so you do have some negative items on here. Remember, it's a history, it's over time. So again, we want to encourage people to move in a positive direction, to just not to use avoidance and not you know, look at it at all. So making sure that even though there's some negative items on there, that you still are moving in a positive direction, your credit history will start to show that as well. Um, so the estimated dates. So in the sense of working with someone who is trying to get possibly a loan through a bank, is the bank may look at credit history, not necessarily your credit score. And remember, these are not scores, they're history. Um, you are not getting your credit score anywhere. You would have to go back onto um, the website and pull your credit score if you're looking for that individual number. So good accounts, anything you have in good standing which are paid up. So again, um, this is what it would possibly look like. And again, it would um, tell the loan type, any remarks, and then the estimated date, again, that it will be removed. This is where you're going to see if anybody else has pulled your credit report. So on this one, we put on there the Sunshine Apartments as an example. So again, apartments can pull at any kind of any employers as well. You want to take a look at this just to see if anybody has been looking at your credit report that you're not aware of. Um, any other items? Check dates on judgments, legal proceedings if they're on there. Your personal statement um, and then soft inquiries. So any, so only you can see those. And then on this screen we put um, the websites as well. But again, they're in your brochure um, and your other fact sheets. So just to get you started is we want to, uh, this is just an example. So on February 2nd, you could pull from Experian, June 6th, Equifax, and then October 10th, TransUnion. Um, so again, this is the website, the annualcreditreport.com, be careful of impost imposter sites. Um, and again, you don't have to follow this order, it was just an example. So you're pulling from three of the, all three of the bureaus. Um, if you are ever asked to put, enter your credit card number, okay, then that is you are not on the free site, so you should never have to enter a credit card number when you're pulling your credit reports. Um, so that's where the credit card and some of those other scam sites um, <coughs> we don't want you on those because they're going to start asking you for credit information. You can print a copy of your report if you do it online and return to the site within 30 days to review again. Some people prefer to save them to their computer. We would recommend that you don't do that, that you just pull it and you have it on record um, and make sure you keep it somewhere safe as well as you look at it. Um, the number's on here again, and then we put the addresses on there. They're also available on their websites if you ever have to contact the bureaus if there's a mistake or you have a question about your report. The spotting ears, that's one of your fact sheets that's in here. So the first one that you see is, again, just the directions. Um, then the second handout that we have in there is what to do with your credit, re uh, with your credit report and how to fix ears. So each bureau has a little bit different process about reporting errors or how you go about doing that. So we just, again, put that information on the back for you um, to access. And if for some reason you don't have access to the internet or um, at home, you can act, use the library. Otherwise, give us a call at Extension and we can help you walk through that process um, if you have to um, report an error. And you want to do it immediately. You don't want to wait a long time before you, before you report anything that's incorrect. We do have a website through Extension that you can sign up where you'll get email reminders. So for me, for instance, it came out, I think around like October 5th or 6th. It's just an email from UW Extension reminding you to pull your report. Um, for me, I like the reminders just because sometimes, like anything, time gets away from you and you may forget. Um, and it's just, again, that reminder to check it and then I can go back to my records and see what bureau I'm pulling from in October. Um, just because, again, you can only pull from each one of them throughout the 365 
next days. The other fact sheets that we have for you just to take with you and look at, um, just because we don't have time to go through all of them, is um, credit report freezes if you have to freeze your account. So that's a fact sheet on information on how to do that. Oh, and then I did stick the mail copy or the mail-in copy in there, I think, for you um, to take with you. So you can certainly do the mail option, or otherwise you can do um, online or phone. If you need more copies of anything, we have copies in the extension office as well. And then the brochure, again, just gives you our contact information as extension, and then it gives it lists all those resources and those websites multiple times um, for you. Okay, so do you have any questions? It's pretty easy to go through for you. Just by a show of hands, have any of you pulled your credit report before? Yeah. Again, we just remember, and Jeremy can go through this too, we just recommend that if you've never done it, to make sure that you do it, to double check. Even if, you know, everything has is okay, you think everything is okay, um, and you haven't had any problem, it's just good to look at it and kind of see what they look like. And again, related to identity theft, you can go through all those reasons why too. If there's um, accounts that are open, do you recommend closing them if you don't use them anymore? Um, we always recommend for extension they have, like if it's a really high interest uh, rate on them, to close those first. Even if it's your oldest account and it gives you, are you going to kill your credit when um, that's your history? Yeah, you they always try and tell you that you don't want to close it because it's going to... Right. She's right. If it's one of your oldest accounts, I would leave that one open. But if you have multiple accounts, I, I would leave them all open probably. Some of them, if you don't use them, they'll close on their own right. anyway. Right. Like if you have a Best Buy card or something like that, like I just had my uh, fleet, or, uh, Menards card just mm -hmm. closed because I didn't buy anything from them in a while. Yeah, so that's true. some of that cleans up on its own.
So if someone ever worked for a company or has a friend that worked for the gas station and they took one of them keys, they have a 50% chance of being able to get into any just about any gas pump in the country. Uh, very similar, a lot, of, a lot of businesses will kind of shock you, a lot of businesses are that way. Um, we have problems with campers, people stealing stuff for campers because most campers only have, there's only a handful of keys. So if you, if you have a master or one of those keys, you can get in, people are breaking in new campers at the camp, the Greenway and that, and stealing TVs and stuff. Um, but that they, you know, it takes a second. Once they get in that panel, the plug where they need plugged in, close it back up. I mean, theoretically, realistically, if they had a key, they could have done it. You know, if it's busy, you know, no one's paying attention, you know, maybe the line is a long line, or they send a friend in to distract the clerk. A couple minutes, they got their thing plugged in, and bam. Um, with uh, the skimming, um, if, you're, if you have a credit card with an RFID chip in it, um, that also is susceptible to kind of the same thing. Um, someone, you can buy an RFID scanner from just about any tech, any online, you can get them cheap online. Um, and uh, actually there was, I have a, a video like from 2020 or something like that where uh, the reporter and this person helping him, they went and bought one of these things and he walked through the mall. And all he did was walk through the mall and he had hundreds of credit cards. It's, they only need to get it within a proxy, kind of like our proximity cards, similar kind of thing. Um, but now this person, just by walking close to people in a mall, had hundreds of credit cards that he would then be able to turn around and use online. Um, that's why they sell those little cases to like shield your card, little metal cases. Um, so if you have a card with a chip, an RFID chip in it, just be aware that it's possibly vulnerable. Is that all the new cards that they're sending out? Are those RFID chips or are those something different? I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if those are the same because the technology, I mean, they're, they're changing some of the technologies on that. I guess you'd have to look into what kind of card you have. I guess I didn't think to look at that before I came. Um, but I, I know, I know in Europe they're using a different type of card, different kind of chip to offset that, and I don't know if that's kind of a new thing we're doing here yet. We're always behind. Well, like you said, you have a Discover, so like my Discover just got replaced yeah. with one with a chip. Yeah, and I, I haven't looked at to see what kind of what the, okay. the technology is on the card. If it's RFID, um, just be, be careful. Uh, so. So you'd recommend getting the case? If it's case RFID, I, yeah, I mean, I it's mean, something to. Oh yeah. No, some people, just, machine, yeah. some people just some people just wrap it in tin foil or something. You know, just oh, some sort of metal to you know block the signal basically. Um, it's kind of the same technology that I mean, if you take your dog, your cat to the vet and get them checked, the same thing. So, um, fishing. Um, that I mean, that's real. This is as old as the internet. Common. You know, those are the emails you get where. Um, they look like they're from a company or a credit card you have or PayPal and they want to try to get you to reply to them. Hey, there's a problem with your account or we need your, it's been a long time, we need you to verify your info. Um, and they, you know, they, a, lot of these, a lot of these web emails are, they, they're pretty authentic looking. Um, so basically these companies don't, these companies don't need to verify your info like that. I mean, just, it just doesn't happen. So if you get an email, um, the, the best thing you can do is just like you know, say your email, you, uh, PayPal email. Don't do anything in the email. Just go to PayPal. Go right to the site and log in from you know where you know where you're going. Because um, the link, uh, the you know the one that was going around with PayPal, when you click on the link, it, it was really hard to tell it wasn't PayPal. Um, especially if you're not tech savvy. You know, someone that most computers would see that the lead the address was not right, um, but it's close enough that the average person probably won't notice. So um, don't follow links and emails. Um, foreign lottery, um, unfortunately, we get a lot of that. Um, we just had a case here not too long ago where an elderly woman called us because someone from the foreign lottery called and said that she won the lottery and she called before she did anything and the deputy told her it's a scam, won't do anything. Well, you know, like a lot of seniors, she needed the money so she just didn't want to believe it was fake. So she 
be able to continue. She did what they said and sent them the money so that they would release the, their winnings. Um, and then she calls back because she didn't get her millions. And it's like, yeah, we told you it was a scam. And unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do for you. But, you know, well, they're still calling you. Well, don't give them any more money. They're not. She still wasn't enough because so she still sent more money. You know, she just wouldn't, you know, because they just they keep on pressuring and, oh, we're going to get you the money. We're going to get you the money. But there's a problem anymore. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes even when the person does the right thing in the first place, we can't stop them from being victimized because the lure of being a millionaire is just so strong. Um, we'll come, well, it's an annual right here in this country. Uh, IRS, there's a couple different, uh, couple different problems there. Um, same thing with the, the information verification. Um, Someone will call you or send an email saying they're from the IRS, try to verify your info, and the IRS absolutely will not call or email, absolutely not. Um, the only way they communicate with people is through the US mail. Um, and even then, if you get something in the mail, I would recommend you, if it's something where they're telling you to call them, don't call the number on the, even if, you know, even if everything looks great and it may well be legitimate, get the phone number from somewhere else, or at least verify it. Because um, you know, people, unfortunately, that do these scams are very talented and intelligent. Um, so they, you know, they can spoof this stuff to make it look really good. Um, but same thing, they're just calling, they'll call to verify your info. Um, another thing that they do is that they'll call and say, uh, there's a problem with your refund, um, and we need, we basically, we need you to pay some sort of a fee or something like that to release your refund. Um, or the third variation is they'll call and say you owe us money. You know, you have $1,500 in back taxes and we need you to pay it. I know again, my IRS doesn't call. But when someone calls you and starts harassing you saying you owe us money, if you don't pay us, we're going to ruin your credit and we're going to come put you in jail. We need the money right now, and they, they use pressure. And not everyone handles pressure well, um, and unfortunately, oftentimes that ends up resulting in them, them just okay, okay, okay. <coughs> what do you need? Go to Wal Walgreens and buy a money pack card and give me the number. And hopefully, somewhere along the lines, uh, the light bulb goes on for people to realize that the IRS doesn't operate in money pack cards. But unfortunately, not always. So. Um, but that's one, you know, one of the things the scammers try to do is this, the pressure tactic. And you know, those, you know, people fold under pressure quite easily. Um, we had another in incident, so different variations of it, uh, over the last couple of years where um, one time they called and saying they were from the local hospital. Another time they were calling people saying they're me from the sheriff's department um, and saying you owe money. From you know, the hospital standpoint, it was you know, insurance collections, etc. When they were calling and saying they're from the sheriff's department, they're saying you're going to have warrants, you're going to go to jail. Um, you know, again, using the pressure uh, to you know people with some something terrible happening to them. You know, but again, if if, uh, if someone someone owes money you know, with the sheriff's department, one it was they were like we were doing. They were saying that we were doing. Um, we do a civil process, obviously, if you work in Coros long enough, you've probably seen John Anderson or Scott Drew about doing the auctions and, you know, the courthouse here, the sheriff's auctions. Um, so we do have some involvement in that. However, what we don't do is collect any money for anyone like that. And that's what they'll do is like, well, you all, you know, we're, we're collecting a judgment for such and such case. And if you don't give us the money to give to this company, you're going to go to jail. Um, we don't. We are a debt collection agency, um, but they'll do that. The scammer, I mean, likely isn't from anywhere near the area, but they just do their homework. So for for here, when they were when they targeted when they were targeting Wood County, they you know they like using law enforcement agencies. They use the FBI. They use the local agencies. Um, they'll also find if you if there's a big law firm in town, they'll do that. You know, like you got Habish, Habish and Davis, whatever, whatever it is now. Um, that's 
popular, well known. Just they, they do something that people are likely to recognize, um, just to try to lend authenticity to their scam, um, and then again try to pressure you, threaten you, um, and oftentimes it will turn quite belligerent and uh, make even you know even harsher threats, even sometimes violent threats. <coughs> um, but most uh, again, often most of the time, they, these people are unlikely to be in the country much less the state. So, um, if you, for anyone that likes that's online at all, um, you know, people, there's, there's, a, there's a virus out there. Um, I, call it, I call it the FBI money pack virus. Um, and it associates, the virus is, associates itself with child pornography. However, you can get it, as I found out during trying to research it, you can get it without looking at pornography sites. So I had to have a hard drive replaced a couple of years ago because I got the virus on my county computer. So, and all I did, I, I decided, all I did was Google the FBI money pack because what I wanted was a screenshot to release in a press release. So people knew when, if this pops up on your computer, don't give them any money. Well, I followed what looked like a news article. And you know, it looked like it was from the Tacoma Daily Herald or something. I clicked on that link, and next thing you know, I had the screenshot I wanted, but unfortunately, I couldn't do anything with my computer. It was locked up. I still had that hard drive. You get it when you keep it. Um, but that I was. That, what, what's that? Your prized possession. Yeah. So I mean, you know, people often think, "Well, I don't, I don't worry about viruses because I don't, you know, I don't go to pornography sites." But they're not. That's not the only place they are. Um, they plant these things wherever they can. But nonetheless, if you basically if you're surfing your computer and or if in, actually there's a phone version now too, um, and a screen comes up, it'll have a logo probably either from FBI or Homeland Security and says. We've detected child pornography on this device uh, in a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo and threatening you with uh, imprisonment, etc. Unless you pay us two hundred and fifty dollars, and again, there's a the middle. The, the, there's just a window in the middle. It's a, it'll tell you go to go to Walgreens, purchase the money pack card for two hundred and fifty dollars. Type the code in here and hit enter, and it actually will unlock your computer. It works for about a week. And then they lock you up again and say, hey, we found more child porn. Um, there's, a, there's a new, more devious version of this uh, program that actually does insert child pornography onto your computer. So the virus comes preloaded with known child pornogra pornogra pornography. So when, not, when this first started, it was just, it was just uh, basically a uh, virus to lock your computer up. But now it's actually dropping illegal files that you get to put in prison on your computer. Um, so if, that, if you're basically, I'm not telling you that it's scary you get in trouble, but if your computer, if you have something like that pops up on the screen, just call us. And uh, you know, just just hey, this is what happened. Um, un, the only unfortunate thing, if it's on your computer, it's really hard. I mean, the probably the only way, the best what I would recommend at that point with the, the computer was to take the hard drive out and smash it. <laughs> I mean, there's almost no way these things embed themselves so deeply in your registry, even the even a system restore it, it doesn't, it doesn't get rid of it. It's still there in the roots of your system. Um, so, I mean, if you're really tech savvy, you know, you, you know, you could probably get it clearing cleaned off. Um, but, but if you were to go to a local business to do it, by the time they're done charging you to do it, you'd further had just to buy a new computer or buy a new hard drive and reinstall the operating system, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, those, the, that virus is, I mean, it's tough. Um, the phone one is not that isn't that bad. Usually, we have found that you do a factory reset; it'll wipe it out. Um, they haven't figured out how to embed that one quite as bad yet. So, um, again, those you know, if you're if you're not like I said, I was looking not for the virus, but I was looking searching for that term when I found it. So. Um, you know, it's not likely you'll come across it, but like I said, the FBI does not want two hundred fifty dollars from you from money back. So, um, tax fraud every year. Um, I deal with this every spring. 
Um, you go to file your taxes, whether it's you or you and your spouse, and next thing you know, the IRS, when you go to either your accountant calls you or when you click to submit, it says cannot, cannot, not, it's declined or rejected because someone's already filed under the social security number. Um, unfortunately, it's all too common. Uh, experts figure that basically any of us that have ever had credit, our information is out there. It's just a matter of you're lucky enough to get chosen by one of these people to scan. I mean, it's just, there's so many data breaches and, uh, you know, of all the ones, of all the ones we hear about, there's probably tenfold more that we don't hear about because these companies don't want us to hear about them. Um, so obviously it looks bad on them. So, um, yeah, basically you can, you're better off just to assume that your information is out there. That's why the credit monitoring and that's why that's important because well, it can happen to anyone. But um, the tax fraud thing, basically you go to file taxes, it'll be declined or rejected because someone's already filed under your social security number. Um, it's a relatively easy process. I'm going to fill you a fill out fill form for the IRS and then, um, and then they'll allow you to submit your taxes and it'll be investigated over 99% um, of the time. The ones that get kicked back to us here at the state level because they're not a part of a grander scheme that's known about. I have not had one yet that's ended up with someone on U.S. soil. Uh, it's always coming from a foreign country. So fortunately there's you know not a lot we're going to be able to do for you, but report it anyway because you're going to have to do that to get your so the IRS will let you file. Um, and then obviously take steps to monitor you know, the, the suggestion in the packet there, which will be provided to you if you report it to us. Um, computer repair. If you're sitting at home and someone calls you and says, I've heard them from Microsoft, I've heard them from Google, from Yahoo, they call people and say, I'm from one of these companies, and we've, we've, I've, we've noticed that there's something wrong with your computer. And for nominal fee, we'll fix it for you. And they basically, you know, these people are salesmen at that point, and they'll talk their way into convincing you that, oh, okay, well, for $200, they're going to make my computer run like brand new again. So then they'll, then basically, this, the, the devious part about this is they have no way to monitor your computer or to know anything about your computer, but they'll have you sit down and then install, uh, like, a go to my PC type program provide them with, they have them that, uh, yeah, I can't remember the names of them, but you go to a website, it takes about a minute to, before you can open it and have someone on your, website, on your computer. Because um, you download one tiny little file, open it, tell them what that code is that it gives you, they punch the code in on their end, and bam, they're in your computer. And then from there, they do you know, any number of crappy things ranging from uh, just stealing, looking, rooting around your computer, looking for insurance people. Um, another, another common one is, is they flip over to the user profile of your computer and lock your account with the password, and then they hold you hostage. Basically, you know, your account's locked. At that point, they're not even paying to be there saying, ha ha, screw you. If you want your computer back, give me 500 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever. And then we'll give you the patent, you know, so basically you give me a money pack card for 100 bucks and I'll give you the password to your computer. Um, so again, Microsoft, Google, um, Norton, Symantec, whatever, none of these, McAf McAfee, they don't call soliciting computer repairs. So if someone calls you saying they are from all these companies, say on them. They're, they're trying to scam you. Um, Cash advance, we've seen a lot of that lately. We get them as you drive through Rapids and see we've got more cash advance stores and churches now. Um, uh, and plus they're all over on, they're online as well. Uh, these are particularly worrisome because to, to get these lines of credit, they don't pull credit, it's not gonna be on your credit report. You can pull your credit report monthly and you're not gonna know most of these cash places they don't. They don't require. That's their thing. They, you know, they don't give a crap what your credit is. All they want is so someone has enough information about you, um, name, date of birth, social security number. They can go online and have a cash advance for a couple thousand dollars in minutes. 
and so you, you find out about it because one day you come home and you open the mailbox and there's a letter it says you know one two three payday loans has turned you over to collections because you own fifteen hundred dollars well, no, I didn't take out any loans that, that'll be the first you know but, um, and then from there it, then you've got to jump through all the hoops with this company filing the report with us and then we've got where we basically work to get, get the account basically ruled fraudulent um, I haven't figured out a good way to prevent that one honestly um, there's like I said because they don't both try to report so best thing is if you get one of those letters uh, I mean just call and we'll work with you and try to get the get it released so um, yeah, we got a few more minutes. So there's, I can't, I guess, I'm not even through all of them, all just what we've seen in the county. Um, basically, um, just simple rules. Hit, um, like the lottery one's a good thing. Um, it, it's too good to be true, it is. Um, people don't, people don't give you money for nothing. Um, you know, if someone calls you and says you won the lottery or you have your, your great aunt Millie died and left you all this inheritance, um, you know, too good to be true with it. Um, if you get an email or letter and it's addressed to sir or madam, well, if someone wants to give you a million dollars, don't you probably think they know your first name and last name? So, um, the, often, oftentimes in these emails and that, uh, the grammar and the typos are terrible. Because again, most of the time these are leading out of the country. So English is a second language and it shows in the, you know, and sometimes it's subtle, some are better than others, but oftentimes it looks like a four-year-old wrote it. I mean, um, but that's also part of the, part of the, some of this is by design. Um, they'll make the, webs, the emails and the websites um, look reasonably correct. But they leave it for someone that, for someone who knows, will be able to pick it up because they don't want someone that knows. They want the most gullible of us. Um, so they're trying. They're they're targeting a particular person with some of this. So, um, but just again, look for like I said. You know, if you're getting an email from PayPal and they're spelling words wrong, that isn't going to happen. I mean, these 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 companies, they have editors and that kind of thing to prevent that stuff. Um, yeah, and pressure, if they're pressuring you, like unreasonably, like really, we're really pressuring you, or you make threats, that's definitely a sign of a scammer. Um, you know, and basically, you know, the processing fee, if you win a lottery, even if you win the Publishers Clearinghouse, they don't make you pay anything. There are no taxes. That comes, that all comes later. Never, even when you legitimately buy one of these tickets or enter one of these uh, sweepstakes, there is never an upfront fee to claim your winnings. So that that is always a scam. And then basically, you know, the thing, unfortunately, that we've had to ask too many people in this community is, did you buy a lottery ticket? You know, so we got scammed because they won the Canadian lottery. And they sent off the five hundred dollars, or sometimes more, to claim their winnings. It's like, well, did you buy a lottery ticket? No. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it's it, well, no, I didn't. Well, why? Why didn't this seem? You know, but unfortunately, again, they're, they're preying on people that you know, said were more gullible. Um, so. They also do like target senior citizens. Um, so this kind of thing is good information to share with grandma and grandpa, mom and dad. Um, you know, don't, you know, I guess I'm, my hope here is not that I'm just talking to you, but I hopefully you share this, um, share some of this info with other people. Um, you know, the more, the more people that know, hopefully the less people that have to call and talk to me in a professional capacity. I have a question. Yes. From those skimmers on the gas pumps, yep. how do you recommend paint for gas then? Cash. Um, <laughs> well, you can go, in, go inside, but yeah, I would just, I mean, if, I, don't, I don't want to sound like it's an epidemic, but it's here, but it's happened here now, and uh, so the, the, 
you know, that's the thing. Uh, I don't, we don't know how long that skimmer was on there. Um, you know, I guess, you know, at least if, I guess, at least if you go, I mean, it's inconvenient, but at least if you go inside to pay, I mean, again, the clerk could steal the stuff too, you know, I mean, that's all, but that's, whenever there's people involved, there's always a risk that way, but um, at least inside, you know, I don't think you, you, you don't have to worry about a skimmer on, a, you know, on the cash register. So that's, you know, yeah, cash, you can't skim cash. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're one that carries this straight, but. <coughs> yeah. But if somebody had your, your credit card and was using it, by looking at your statement every month, you'd know that I didn't buy this, my husband yep. didn't buy this and be able to contest it? Or? Yeah, absolutely, yes, and by all means, <coughs> we'll just monitor your credit report and look at your, don't look at your credit, you know, credit card, I mean, if, so a lot of it will be pretty easy if, if, if you don't, if you only use it slightly, but some people use their credit cards for everything and then pay them off. Well, now if you run off a good balance because you're getting, you're buying your gas and that to collect miles, maybe you won't know because a lot of these perks, they aren't just hitting you for $500. There are people that are using them for smaller amounts. So you might not notice it. So it does, I would definitely recommend, look at your bill, look at your statements from your credit cards, make sure that's all me. Um, you know, and sometimes we've had that where some people don't re really recognize things that they purchased. But um, I guess I'd rather spend time to figure out that uh, it was legitimate than, than to, you know, to have to go the other way with it. Um, the good thing about credit cards is, is that uh, as long as it's proven fraudulent, they always, they make you whole. And then they basically become the victims and it's in the investigation. Um, doesn't make you feel any less scuzzy that your information was stolen and used, but at least you're not out the money. Um, be careful with debit cards, though, because some banks, some banks will reimburse you, but others won't. Um, it's be really careful with debit cards, because that's basically like you know, you think about someone stole your checkbook and cash checks. Is the bank going to give you the money back out of the checkbook? Debit card is the same thing. Um, again, sometimes they're protect protected. It depends on the bank. And maybe that's something you want to talk with your bank about. Um, but a lot of times the bank is like, no, it's, you're using you're using a debit card at your own risk. Um, so that's where you're, you know, you're better off. That's where credit cards are better. Just because if someone, if you use it and someone does get compromised, does be compromised, um, at least if you know you're safe. That way you're going to get your money back. But um, I've seen that, unfortunately, all too often with debit cards where uh, the people are just out the money. And a lot of times if someone knows they got a debit card, they don't stick with the little stuff. They clean it out. You know, they'll take whatever, they take everything they can get out of it because they know they're going to bump up to the limit, hopefully the when it's out, it's out. You know, so where the credit card, maybe it, if they can keep using it, it'll just keep, kind of keep going. So, um, yeah, I don't, definitely don't use your debit card online. That definitely not. Um, I mean, I get it if you're using a McDonald's or whatever, I mean, locally. Um, but again, there is always that risk. So. so if somebody calls me and says, oh my gosh, this happened, where would I send them? It's, what numbers would I tell them to call you, the Sheriff's Department? If someone calls. And ask for, somebody calls my office and says to me, Oh my gosh, somebody ripped me off. There was a scam. Yeah, just call dispatch and call them. And then they'll make, they'll make, yeah, call them to talk dispatch and then they'll assign the appropriate agency, the officer to help them. Um, you know, most of the time, all we're doing, able to do is take the reports. Every company requires a report to make a fraud report with them. Um, but most of the time, then the company will then in turn reimburse the customer. Um, you know, I mean, the, the number of these that, that get solved are so minuscule. Um, I mean, I've had a couple of them because everything was local, um, but most of the time, uh, it just it ends up getting, I mean, I just had one, unfortunately, a woman locally where it ended up down in uh, Miami-Dade County. Um, she got like $1,700 she got hit for, and we you know, tracked the person I mean, I don't know who the person is, they tracked them down to Miami, got a hold of Miami Dade, and they said they were and they were helpful, but and they said, Do you know who it is? Well, no, I don't. They go, How much was it? 1700 
and like, yeah, uh, basically, I need you guys. Basically, it's an investigation that needs to be continued on your end. Because like, I've gone as far as I can. Now we don't investigate these unless they're over seventy-five thousand dollars. Sorry. <laughs> so I had to call the bank back and say, because the Associated Bank assumed the, or I'm sorry, it was a local, one of the one of the local banks up in Ontario assumed the. They made her whole, um, even though it was because she's a long-time customer, and it was even though it wasn't, it was a uh, like I said, a checking thing. But now they're all seventeen hundred dollars because you know Miami just we've got too much of it. We can't, we don't have the resources to invest in a seventeen hundred dollars is another is just is another that our DA won't prosecute it. So mm -hmm. that's unfortunately some of the things I run into. But yes, just you know, most most of the time, when someone they call us, make a report. They'll be, they usually can get the money back. Do you recommend identity theft on insurance? Because uh, I guess I, I don't. I mean, who my insurance I, company has been pushing. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's that I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know what it all. I'm sure they've got the great sales pitch and all those great things that it does. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I do most most of the stuff. Basically, usually, usually, usually with those, it just depends if you're if you're doing things the right way. Like I said, you know, most of the time you're not actually going to be out with money. Um, you know, and then yeah, it's a headache to file go to the credit agencies and file the crop, they'll put the alerts and everything on. But, you know, is, how much is it, is it worth the monthly fee to you not to have to do that? Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I guess I, I'm not, I don't know, I, I don't know enough about the, what they're offering to say one way or the other. Um, personally, I, I personally wouldn't do it, but everyone's um, level of comfort with that is different. And, as far as, and also, you know, how comfortable you are with how secure you're able to maintain your own identity, it's, that's a tough question. Anyone else? Cool, everyone stay awake, that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you for coming, take resources. If you want to take extra copies for a coworker or family or friends. Yes. I don't like these, these books, these, the stuff like this here. We always have these available in the Sheriff's Department as well. Um, you probably have more yep. too. So these are all free, so if you ever want more of them, just let us know.